Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video. This is probably going to be a quick one and I guess a, a tad niche, but I was trying to find a way so that I could do the logging through Mango Hub and I had a look and it is it is sort of a thing, hood, sorry, Mango Hood, and it is sort of a thing that can be done on, on Linux, as far as I'm aware, but uh, it needs changes to the config folder in order to be able to um, set where the logging goes, as far as I'm aware. I'm sure someone can tell me differently, but... Uh, eventually I went down a bit of the rabbit hole of trying to go through like, all the all the, the files in the back end to see if there was a way of, of getting to it. And it looks like Gamescope in the end actually makes a temporary Mango Hood uh, config file, which I guess sort of makes sense because there's some hokery pokery going on that uh, Valve have worked on to make it work properly in SteamOS. But outside of all that, one of the things that I thought was quite interesting is that there are some notes within uh, the actual Gamescope file. So some justification and some things for them to work on. So I figured we'd just go through that, spend a couple of minutes and just yeah, highlight some of the stuff um, that's in there and sort of maybe maybe why it's in there. So uh, there's a couple of, like I say, it all seems like, um, what was it like director's commentary when you get like a film and stuff? So I, I, find it, I find this sort of thing and I find that sort of thing quite interesting. So initially write no display to our config file. We don't want to get Mango app showing up before the Steam before Steam initializes. Um, so obviously, clearly they were having an issue with that one there. Um, I imagine you probably could put a bit of code into the config file to set where you would where your login would go. Whether that would activate the shortcut or not, I don't know because like um, hiding the hood and stuff shortcuts that there already are doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm not certain. Um, and then you got the, you got this one here. Um, let's try this across the board to see if it breaks anything. And it actually found that it helped performance in Horizon Zero Dawn and Cyberpunk, which is um, interesting. And then the fact that they were exposing the, well, all the threads. I don't know why they put it as four. There's not four physical cores. There's only four physical cores. Um, unless they mean the, no, they don't mean the GPU, do they? But anyway, that's quite interesting. Um and then to expose VRAM info from Randa V's patch, we're including uh, that one in there. And then a workaround for Steam getting killed immediately during reboot. So a lot of uh, you can see sort of where the where the testing has gone. I'm not sure if it obviously it's not chronological, but it's um, it's nice that there's some like justification as to why some of this stuff is in there. So to allow different different bits to happen. Um, and then you've got like these sections here, which are clearly going to be um, an update. So bring this back when uh, Gamescope side is more complete. Remove vSync handling from X Wayland. We handle it in Gamescope. Not sure what X Wayland is, although I do have that file. Um, although there wasn't really anything very interesting in there, not in the same way that this is. So yeah, it looks like um, that's going to be handled by... Um, It's going to be handled by Gamescope rather than whatever X Wayland is. I think I don't know. I'm not sure what that's trying to say, um, but still um, interesting. There's another one of these to do's as well. Uh, a little bit further down, uh, work around for Steam login issues while Steam client uh, change propagates out of beta. So that's clearly something that they've. That's probably maybe one of the the newer ones, I guess, to keep it to put it in line with for the for the rollout. Um, uh, there's nothing really in there, I don't think. The more to do with Gamescape rather than Mango Hood. Um, fall early for the proper runtime. I'm trying to see, I think most of the interesting bits are up there, but you've got this one here, which is another to do. Uh, leave a note for Steam to display UI to explain what happened. Uh, if this logic stays intentionally leave comp data this could be unclouded there could be unclouded save files there it's funny how how um those sort of like link together i guess because it's using the, the shader cache so i'm not actually sure how new this is because i know they've been doing a lot of work on on that so i don't know if if stuff has changed in the back end like this i mean it's all sort of read only um so i imagine potentially and then some stuff about Needing enough space, disk space. Um, attempt to claim global session if we're the first one running. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, nothing else really there. You guys may spot something that I've missed from here that's interesting. 
Uh, to do could detect if we're in the dev kit case below and undo that instead. Instead of resetting the wrong thing, could also print a full list of files and sides in the Steam directory and save a diagnostic report. Um, okay, not really sure. Obviously, like I says, more for devs. Don't see where I would really get that from. Um, but that would be interesting if that's part of the developer mode, potentially, having those logs. But anyway, looks like that's on to do still. Anyway, uh, start a background sleep for five seconds because we don't trust it, which is what happens when it when it exits. Uh, ask, games to, uh, ask Gamescope to exit nicely. Let's kill it. I know that's obviously just the terminology. Um, and they've got a thing in there for, um, yeah, if it times out. Uh, kill, proceed to kill everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems like they may have had some issues where it was uh, lingering and didn't want to go down. But to be fair, it's, I've not had any issues with Gamescope. Whatever they're, you know, everything that they're doing and, you know, obviously put mitigations in place has worked perfectly fine. Um, this should just be waiting on kill, minus 90, not sure what that one necessarily means. Um, another signal will cause this to give up, but we should <laughs> be a little stubborn about not letting the session die with Gamescope holding on to things. Yeah, no, that's true. And that's it. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess you'd, this might be something that you would look at while poking around in the same way that I have in terms of, uh, you know, trying to do stuff with Mango Hood and things. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting because it gives you a bit of, a, of an insight into um, what sort of work they've had to do. I know it's just for uh, Gamescope and, and Mango Hood particular, in particular, but, you know, one thinks that there must be this sort of stuff for loads of different aspects in the back end of Steam OS. And this is because as the, the metrics are one of the things that I absolutely love about the Steam Deck. I mean, I wasn't even aware that that was going to be a, a thing until not that long before it came out. So I'm really glad to see all of that. And um, it's probably one of the like greatest software um, stuff they've done for the Steam Deck, obviously, other than all the work on Proton and all that sort of thing. But yeah, hmm. Anyway, let me know what you think. I found that quite interesting. Um, whereas, I don't know <laughs> if you guys uh, feel the same. But yeah, if you've spotted anything interesting from that though while going through it with me, let me know because I'd be interested to know if there's a bit more detail in there, something I may have missed. Um, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.